Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to share with you today my best books for connecting with your feminine energy. And if you've heard of feminine energy, you're starting to tap into yours, these books are your guides and your resources. They've been on my journey as well as my clients and they really help you understand what femininity means to you because in society we get so many mixed up ideas around what being feminine is, what it means, and these books will help you show the many forms that the feminine can take up and make. And so these books can help you reclaim your feminine energy, your power, and let your feminine lead in your relationships and yeah, and even your business. And so these books are a great starting point, I would say, for healing your feminine energy. And then the best thing that you could do is to embody and experience somatically what it feels like being in your feminine. So it just becomes your natural way of being instead of like a concept, an idea, something that you're thinking about or tapping into. This is just who you are because it is. And it's just about unlearning the false <laughs> ideas around the feminine that you grew up with and even you know living in a patriarchal structure and how that has really obscured the power of the feminine so here are my best books to heal your feminine energy the first book i recommend is made into mother by sarah durham wilson this book is so helpful and really gave me an understanding of the different archetypes that there are with women um, most commonly known as the maiden archetype where you're a young woman and a young girl and then the mother archetype which is like mid life period and then crone which is like your later years and your inner wise woman and this book really talks about the author's journey to her own um, embracing of the mother archetype and how she leads women through um, their own rituals because we don't have those in society anymore so you know back in the day there were these um, transition points and these rites and rites of passage and now it's really um, not there and so women even though they grow in the physical body to be a woman age wise they can often still have this like maiden energy because our society values like youth eternal youth and so it teaches you how your mother archetype will help you to be more in control of your emotions, more um, in trust of yourself and have less anxiety because you know that you can handle whatever comes your way. And you take a level of responsibility that the maiden, the young girl is not able to. And it really helped me to approach different um, challenges say like uncertainties with this mother archetype of like okay I can handle this I know what to do I can be calm there's solutions versus going to this like very young like disempowered inner child place really to me and yeah and so it's really helpful and she talks about the myths and the archetype um, and it gives you all the information that you need around the archetype and then practical like journaling prompts, uh, meditations too that are really powerful. Um, if you listen to it on the audiobook, I really felt a shift from those. So that is the first book I would recommend, Made Into Mother. Okay, the next book we have is A Confident Woman by Marjorie Hansen Shavitz. And it's really a guide to building unshakable confidence as a woman and it helps you break free from self-doubt and societal expectations. I say that's a main thread in a lot of these books that I'm going to share with you today is like breaking free from societal expectations to embrace your own true authenticity, your true beliefs around the feminine and your feminine energy and how that looks like to you. And I found this book in a little library at a time, uh, one of those free little libraries where I really was like my confidence was shaken and this book was so helpful in being a practical guide. There's a lot of 
research in it too and there's practical steps at the end of each chapter and I found that it was so helpful like I noticed the shift after I read this book and it gives you really this guide to build your life and make it so full that you feel enough as you are and that even if you um, are in a transition or something is uh, going on with your relationship or you don't have a partner it like gives you all these steps and tools to make your life like so full and be present from that place and that's just something that I see in my own self and a major takeaway from this book uh, the Confident Woman. The next book is called Unbound, A Woman's Guide to Power by Cassia Urbaniak. And it is a roadmap for women to seek, who are seeking breaking free from these societal constraints and returning to their true potential. And what's really cool is Cassia is a former dominatrix and a trained Taoist nun. And so she's learned a lot about power dynamics and how to teach you to see in different situations where you're giving your power away, where where you don't need to you know grab for power and you can just like lean back and have it, um, and how that actually shows up. And so it gives you tools, and I really loved how after I felt connected to like this permission to be in your power, like there's many scenarios where it's literally required of you to be in your power as a woman and she talks a bit about the reasons why it's harder for women to um, take this role and then how to break free from that so this book really changed my life and it helps you to use this power for good and influence people and i think that as part of feminine leadership and being able to lead in a way that's like healthy and balanced this book is really helpful to do that and if you have struggled with boundaries and going into that kind of martyr mother archetype of trying to caretake for everyone this book is for you to be able to learn how to use that feminine energy for good and use it with power oh yeah and one of the key teachings from this book that I really felt might give you an idea of what it's about is she recommends asking without reservation. And she says women often hesitate to ask because they've been trained to believe that asking will create an implied debt. So that's one way it shows up of not being in your power. And I, I think I can relate to that and so many women can of not wanting to ask because of this false idea. And it shows you how wielding power can be really healthy. Okay, so the next book is Queen's Code by Alison A. Armstrong. And this book was recommended to me by a friend who's a dating coach that takes her clients through this process and really embrace this uh, mindset. And it's all about reclaiming your power as a woman and embracing regality within and how you can be living from this place and receive more in your relationships, romantic relationships and otherwise, but it really has a focus on that. And if you can get past the cheesiness factor, which I was really able to, um, and <laughs> read it, it has a lot of different um, scenarios and so you see it illustrated in the story it's really helpful to see how your relationship with men is really reflected in how they can show up for you and it just gives you an example of a woman who's just um, not trusting of men and like always has these bad experiences and then um, this older woman who's the main part of the story who's a queen and she's um, taken really uh, well care of of her partner and he's always like thinking of her and wants to serve her and she's like receiving that and it's really really helpful to start to see like where this conditioning has happened with women of like needing to do everything alone and how it's just like a backwards idea of feminism and so I really appreciated hearing that because I think a past version of myself would um you know cling to that idea of just because i can do it on my own doesn't mean i ever need help and that the main part of this book i would say the main point is that 
even though you don't need it, it feels really great to have it. And you can be self-sufficient and also receive and it actually makes everything a lot better. So I really recommend this book around embracing your inner queen. Okay, so this next book is called Mother Hunger by Kelly McDaniel. This is for when you are ready to heal your relationship with your mother, which is the first example that you have of femininity and what being a woman means and what it looks like. And so it's such an important relationship and she talks about in the book how it impacts your nervous system, your biology, your beliefs, and these connections that you have with other people in your life were all based on your maternal connection so i will say that this is one to come to when you're ready to look at all that and heal and it came to me at the exact right time on my journey a couple years ago and she really makes the case for why it's so important to reckon your relationship with your mother so that you feel whole and there's a lot of research she shares as to how this you know relationship if it's not repaired how like it inflicts so much pain and just that feeling of being enough and it talks about how you know when you're in relationships if you feel like really needy and you need a lot of love reassurance or if you go through periods of like overeating or starving and and you just like that attachment style kind of issue um, can all stem back to your relationship to your mother and how she was in her feminine or not. And so she really takes out this, the shame that comes with being under mother and misdiagnosed and teaches you how to become your own mother. And that was the biggest lessons I got from this book is like, you are your own mother and you can still have forgiveness and love for your mother. And um, and know that ultimately at the end of the day, you can take care of your own emotional needs, perhaps a lot better than your your mother can, right? Um, so yeah, so it's really about like becoming whole and going back to the made into mother video, it's really the next step after that. Okay, like how are you going to mother yourself and lead yourself? So this next book is a great, start into looking at the energy of the feminine and the masculine and it's called the radiance sutras by lauren roach and it really helps you to explore divine energy within yourselves and the world around you and it's one of those books that if you're not meant to read in a full uh, sitting it's one that you kind of come back to and you open up to a random page or one of the sutras, which is a Sanskrit kind of um, channeling. And I received this book as part of my feminine embodiment training. And it really is something that when you read it, you can feel the energy in the way that they're describing it of how it flows in your body and this aliveness, this sensation of like stillness and receptivity really helps you to start to like tune into what that energy feels like inside of you and it's just a really juicy special book which i i love and i continue to read it so it's like an ongoing kind of process and it's a great book to read like in the morning if you do a morning routine or even in the evening before bed to like connect to this divine feminine energy now i want to talk about pussy and reclamation by Regina Thomas Tower, also known as Mama Gina. I will probably need to blur this out for YouTube policies, but at the same time, the reason she called this book by this name is she talks about how she is reclaiming it and how it's a positive term that has been made dirty, has been made negative, and she really gets into like the church and the patriarchal you know structures that have existed in our society that really took away the power from this word and this part of ourselves as women and this book taught me how powerful it can be to listen to this part of your body as a woman that this part is your intuitive center it 
has wants, it has needs, and it won't guide you in the wrong direction. And we have been conditioned to disconnect from it because it is so powerful. And the work I do is with embodiment. So this is a key part of that. It's connecting to this main representation of feminine energy. And I know a few people that have worked with Mama Gina and just, I know how transformative her work can be around like healing this kind of sexual wound that women have. And not even that, but just like honoring and nurturing this part of ourselves and being proud of it. Um, you just think around like how, um, yeah, repressed this part has been, especially when you think about like cycles, menstrual cycles, and how those are still like taboo. And this book really teaches you how to own that part of yourself and talk to it. And it's pretty wild once you try some of the um, exercises or just her directions and guidance around like asking this part of yourself questions and getting answers and I really really see this shift in my life that came from just like okay if I ever feel in a situation where I don't know the answers <laughs> just ask this part of yourself because it knows and it will tell you when something is off and and you can see that through you know imbalances in your cycle and things like that so this is a key book if you are learning how to embrace and embody your true womanhood and your feminine energy. So the next book we have here to connect with and heal your feminine energy is Women Who Run With The Wolves, The Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Archetype. This book is a classic for any woman who is connecting with her wild woman within, which we all have. And this book I have found will come to you at a moment where <laughs> that untamed part of you is emerging and it can really be a comfort and a guide and give you permission to let that untamed part of you come through. So this book is by Clarissa Pinkola Estes and she uses myths to illustrate this idea and this truth that we all have this untamed part of ourselves that is actually extremely powerful and can guide us through our challenges. And it may not have the timeline that you want, <laughs> um, but it really, this book shares how the wild woman has this intuitive sense of unfolding and knowing what steps to take. And in order to move towards what is right for you, you want to be allowing that unfolding process to happen. So that is when I found this book. I was traveling in South America. I was in between different chapters in my life. I call this the messy in between. And this book really just gave me permission to be in that place and not run away from it and to embrace it and understand that it's happening for me. And that's what this book is sharing, that the feminine is this slower creative intuitive energy that is guiding you and a lot of us are living from this place that we've been conditioned to um, be over planning have to know the exact next step really stuck in our heads and have to figure things out and this book is teaching you that you already have the answers and that this wild woman can get you out of <laughs> Uh, different scenarios that are challenging if you listen to her. So this is essential to anyone wanting to connect with their feminine energy. And finally, we have If Women Rose Rooted by Sharon Blackie. And I'll be honest, I'm still in the middle of reading this, but it had to be included. So this book is something I found in a feminist bookstore in Edinburgh, Scotland, when I was there recently, I was in heaven. There were so many feminist books, empowerment books for women, and these were one of the few I got. And it really spoke to me because this idea of women rising rooted is what feminine energy is about. Feminine energy is about being in your body and so connected to it, being connected to the earth. And I really like her approach, which uses myth 
and it also uses memoir and a lot of research too. So Dr. Sharon Blackie is a renowned psychologist and she talks about the impact of being disconnected from feminine energy that it has on the earth. And she really talks about how it's an individual issue, it's a collective issue. And I love that the myths that she used speak to this same idea that women have a lot of power. And if you're into witchy things, this book, you'll really like it. I love the Celtic myths that she used and they really show that women have this innate connection to the earth. The earth is feminine energy and that any harm done to the earth has been made from a place of being disconnected from that feminine energy and the earth. And she talks about how people living in cities, working in skyscraper, these corporations are the ones making decisions that are so harmful because they don't have any connection to the harm that they're causing. And I'm really excited to continue on reading it, but it's just very, very informative and really um, makes you think around the impact that you're having by connecting to your feminine energy. It's not even just about you being able to relax more and receive more and have a partner that's really leading you and um, pouring into you and just having more of that softness quality in your life. It's like this ripples out to the men in your life, to the earth, because it's like restoring a balance. So, so life-changing. So I really recommend this book so that you can understand the profound impact that tapping into your feminine energy and healing it has. So these are all the books that I would recommend to anyone who is just starting to understand what their feminine energy is, how they can embrace it, and understand the impact that this has on their lives in so many ways and on the earth as well and the collective. So I'd love to know which book you are most excited about reading in the comments below, or if there's a book I didn't mention that has helped you connect to your feminine energy, I would love to hear about that too. So thank you for being here and I will see you in my next video.